So we've now seen that our sum signal that's undergone a Hilbert transform, so our sum signal xt that's undergone a Hilbert transform, it's convoluted with a 1 by pi t in the time domain, or in the frequency domain, our Hilbert transformed signal, right? This is our Hilbert transformed signal. It's a signal that has been multiplied in the frequency domain by minus j sigma f. So let's consider in the frequency domain some x of h, which has undergone the Hilbert transform. So we can separate this now. So we've taken our original signal, we've pulled it out front, and now we've pulled apart this. And we can see that a function x of h, which has undergone a Hilbert transform, basically means that it's a signal that got multiplied by minus j sigma f. And when we pull it apart like this, we can start to think of this as a, from a systems perspective, saying that the Hilbert transform transfer function is minus j sigma f. So the transfer function that we are looking for is going to be this Hilbert transformer. So we have this Hilbert transformer transfer function minus j sigma f. And right, this is that transform that we are looking for here. Right, we're trying to figure out if we can get a filter that will remove some of our um, these lower sidebands. So we need to put it put our signal through this Hilbert transformer that has this transfer function. Okay, and when we write it this way, we can see that we have our input x of f goes through the transfer function, and then we have this Hilbert transformed signal at the output. Okay, now from a systems perspective, right, this means that we have some signal going in to a Hilbert transformer. The Hilbert transformer has this transfer function, and our output is the Hilbert transformed function. So going back to our signum tool, right, this was our original definition of signum x. Now we have our Hilbert transform, which is minus j signum of x. So let's see if we can do some mathematical transforms to better understand the meaning of this transfer function. What is the meaning of this transfer function to both the magnitude, right? What is the meaning of it for the magnitude of x of f? And also the phase, right? We're going to have some phase as well. So what does this Hilbert transform do to the magnitude and phase of the signal x of f that goes into the Hilbert transformer? So first we had the sigma f. Sigma f um, is going to look like this, right? You have the signum function minus one to one. Now, if we change it slightly, right, to j signum f, right, we've multiplied our signum function by j, we can now see that this is first minus j, then it goes up to j. Uh, and if you apply the minus sign, this is going to flip it, right? Going to flip um, it, the side that it's on from being a positive uh, for positive frequencies into now it's, it's positive in the negative frequency. So we now have applied the minus sign. And now we should start thinking about uh, re recalling the Euler function, okay? Because we can see now that our minus j sigma f is defined as minus j for some frequencies above zero and j for frequencies below zero. And we have a relationship between uh, e to the j and cosine of some angles. And so thinking about that, we know that for some value of theta, right, if for some special value of theta, e to the j theta is going to be equal to 0 minus j, which is minus j. It's here. And for some other value of theta, e to the j theta is going to be equal to 0 plus j, like this. So we can realize that there's going to be some theta. We could redefine this using some theta values for e to the j theta. And clearly, right, if theta is equal to minus pi half, then e to the j theta is equal to minus j. And if um, theta is equal to pi half, then e to the j theta is equal to j. Okay, so now we can rewrite our minus j sigma f. And don't forget, right, this is our transfer function. We can rewrite this using some e to the j theta value. So we can now say that our Hilbert transformer is some transformer that is equal to e to the minus j pi half above frequency zero and is equal to e to the j pi half below frequencies of zero. So our Hilbert transform transfer function can be rewritten using this Euler formula and we can see that it has this e to the j 
uh, effect. Now, I asked you a question earlier that said, okay, we we're going to approach this from a signal perspective, and we want to know how does this affect both the magnitude and the phase. So what we should start to be seeing is that due to this J value, right, because there's this imaginary component, we're going to be having um, some, some phase effects on our function. So what are those phase effects? We have an input, and we have a magnitude and phase of our input to our transfer function. Then we have our transfer function, which we've defined using the Euler formula. And we can see that our transfer function is this e to the, the j theta. And then we have our output Hilbert transformed function, which is it can be written in this um, signal perspective, signal and system perspective. So therefore, at frequencies above zero, we have our output, Hilbert transformed output, is equal to our input transfer function magnitude and the transfer function above frequencies of zero is e to the minus j pi half. So for frequencies above zero, we have the magnitude and then the phase is going to be multiplied by this e to the minus j pi half term. And so this is going to end up being a subtraction of phase. And before frequency of zero, what the Hilbert transform is doing is taking the phase and it's adding pi half. So what we can see now is that the Hilbert transformer is actually a phase shifter because right our input signal, our input signal which had some magnitude and some phase enters the transfer function and what we can see is that the magnitude is unaffected. The magnitude is the same before it enters the transfer function as when it exits the transfer function, but it has undergone a phase shift. So the Hilbert transformer is an ideal phase shifter. And the transform that we're looking for, the system that we need, the system that we need in order to realize this filter is a, a phase shifting system. So we're going to need to do some kind of phase shifting in order to remove these lower sidebands.